In this video, we're going to learn how to create a vector self-portrait and using a raster image as the source, we're going to create a vector self-portrait using the vector tools found in Adobe Illustrator. And I'll be working in Adobe Illustrator version 2020. So what I'll do is here is I know that I probably want to work with a letter format, but there are more presets you can select here to kind of decide what you think you want to work with. This actually will work out fine. I'll start with the letter format and you can work with whichever works best for you. What I need to do is I need to go into document color mode and I'm going to set this for RGB because I know when this is finished, I'm going to place this on the web and I'm going to set this to Essentials Classic as my workspace. And as I have this as the workspace, as I've said in previous tutorials, you can drag and can make it a little bit larger so you can see the name along with the actual symbol that represents the pop-out window that will begin to appear once you click on it. So we go to file and place just as we did before. And as we go into file and place, then from there we go ahead and we select the image that we want to trace. I'm going to select this template and template works a little bit different than the regular layers in Illustrator. It actually uses it as exactly what we're working with is it uses it as a tracing image, which exactly is what this will be. And then from there I'll click place. Now, if you see by default, this template is locked and you can see basically it uses the name template tracing image that JPEG. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on that crop image option just as we did before. And then from doing that, then I have the screen that'll come up that allows me to crop the image more to my liking. And I'm just going to crop this so that'll be to the bounding, the boundaries of the actual um, document that I'm working with. So now as I'm looking at it, then there are different steps as to how we want to work with this. If you were to go into the drop down here, it allows you to open up different libraries. But in the towards the bottom, what I want to focus on is open swatch library. But if you look down here to the bottom, it has skin tones. So if I were to click on skin tones, you'll see that it provides a variety of skin tones here that actually represent most of the colors that you'll see in the variety of spectrums of, of skin tones and colors that exist in, in this world we live in. And what I'm going to do now with these different layers, um, right now I'm going to create this as I'm just going to call this outlines. And the outlines are basically the things that are going to be at the at the foreground. And right now I'm looking at this actual stroke and fill. I'm going to swap this so that all I'm going to do is be creating the actual stroke itself. And I use command plus command minus to kind of zoom in so I can begin to adjust different things. In this case, I'm just going to go ahead and just begin to um, define certain portions of the, of the head shape here. And that path, I can just call it the um, head outline. So from here, I'm going to begin to just kind of outline the, the shape of the eyebrows. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue in this whole process of outlining things. But once I have something set, I like to lock those layers so I don't have to worry about it anymore. And I can unlock it later on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new layer here. And I'm going to place it below the outline set. And I'm going to call it the eyes. And after I've done it, then I can swap it back out and make that into a fill. So I have both of those portions there. And then I have the other part that kind of lays over top of it. So at this point, I've added the most of the shape for the eye here. As far as these eyes work, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my selection tool. I'm going to select all within this area. And you can see that over here to the side, it selected that range of those. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to object and I'm going to group these together. The reason why I'm doing it this way is because eventually what will happen is I'll be able to create the lips, which would actually be the eye itself. And I'll place that there. And as far as the color of it, what I'll do is I'm going to double click and I'm going to go towards more, not completely, nobody's eyeball is completely white. It's going to have more of like a grayish type of tone to it. And I'll select that there. And now what I'll do is I'll take that, what I've created now, I'm going to place that inside of that group as well. So I'm going to take that ellipse that I created and place this right down towards the bottom. And now you can see that it's inside of that group. And I can select the different portions of it and the same Bezier handles will appear that I can use to modify the shape of the eye as well. And then from there, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create um, an ellipse here, and that's going to represent the actual eye itself. So I'll go ahead and grab this portion here at the top, and I'll bring this down because I know I'm not going to need that portion because it's going to be hidden under there. Inside of that eye, and I'm going to make this the actual iris itself. Now, this part, the iris is going to be one that I'm going to make sure that is going to be reversed because I want to have it filled in. And as far as the actual fill of the path, what actually is going to be the um, more of the of the retina portion. And then what I'll do is I do the same thing for the other eye as well. And then as far as the actual color itself for the retina, okay. Um, with the pencil tool, I can actually kind of move and I can kind of draw a line. If I don't like it, I can try it over again. But also at the same time, it allows me to have more control over how the actual line is going to look. So after it's finished, I can see it's, it's okay, but there's some areas that I probably want to modify a little bit more. And I can kind of go over from point to point and modify the line.
itself. So that gives me a lot I can work with. And as you can see right now, I have the, the main line that's uniform, but I'll make more adjustments to that a little bit later on. So as far as that's concerned, it was just looking to create a couple of lines that exist on, on this edge here. And as we move further down on the face, then from there I'm looking at additional things that I see. And then moving along further down, I can see that there's a contour as far as for the nose. There you can see there's a little bit more shadow on this side than it is on that side. But what I'm focused on first with this area here, and I'm going to label this one nose. With regard to the nose, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and begin to kind of just draw what it is I'm looking to work with. And then from there, I can make more modification. So what I'm going to do, I see that first there's a little contour around here for the nose. And that kind of works for me. And then I have um, the other portion that kind of continues on to right around here. And again, I like that pencil tool because if there is something that I mess up on, I can always make adjustments. Like say, for example, I want to make it a little bit rounder here. I can make that adjustment. I like using the pencil tool for that very reason. And from there, um, maybe decide a little bit more here. And a little bit more there. And then model, I can make a little better on that. Okay. And from there, I'll do the same thing as far as for the, the curves for the side, of the side of the face there. So I'll make another layer called mouth and then and then from there what I can do is with the mouth adding that same part as far as a little curvature here for the first one adding a second there for the other one a little slight curvature right there for the mouth and then from there I can select those those three areas as well and as we've done before I'll take the stroke down perhaps a little bit add the uniform make it more um, to what we would see on the face there then from there as far as on the mouth I'm going to go ahead and draw the lips there and like I said I like using that pencil tool for that reason and then from there, the same thing, I can kind of continue on to here, right across the portion of the lips there, and make that more of a the first lip. I mean, in fact, if that's done, then what I can do is do a second one here. I know there is indeed some a little bit more of the curvature that you can do as far as around the cheekbone and such like that. So I have some of that already going on. And then from there, like I said, I can make more modifications to that. But I'm kind of okay with that. As far as lips are concerned, um, obviously there's different flush tones depending what lips mostly most are, are going to be the same. I'm going to go a little bit more as far as flush tone. This is going to work a little bit better, I think. And then from there, of course, there are details within the lips. And I'll do that, and you'll see that in the final version. And as I've defined all of those areas here, I think this is a good point to break. And then next step, we'll get involved with creating skin tone. Hi, everyone. Thanks for watching. Click the link in the description below to explore more free online professional development on the Adobe Education Exchange. And click the link on screen to subscribe to the channel for more videos.